So Amanda, it's fabulous to be in bed with you. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your company? I just love the story. So we started 20 years ago. I purchased two beds for Jack and Harry. They arrived. Um, it was evident that they weren't going to last the boys five minutes. So I then decided, um, yeah, we can do this. We can do this ourselves. And that's how it started off. So we started off in a very, very small way. And um, we've been very lucky, worked many, many hours, as you probably know. Yes, absolutely. You can is relate it, to there's, that. <laughs> yeah, there's, um, yeah, there's ups and, 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 and there's downs. Um, but we're very lucky in the fact that the boys went off to do their own thing. Mm. And then both boys have come back to join the company. So they are the young legs of the company. Uh -oh. So the plan is in the next year, Stephen and I can start taking steps backwards as the boys take the company forward. That sounds absolutely fabulous. I mean, our, our children have also been involved in, in our business as well, in terms of marketing, running warehouses, um, every part of the business. And it's fabulous to have that sort of family connection in, in a company, which I really relate to. I mean, I, I just, I love, I love the story. I mean, we, we don't have anything as exciting as bouncing on beds in the start of our, in our organization. But one of the things I just think is so incredible alongside of the beautiful um, beds and mattresses that you create is your approach to sustainability and that you're completely carbon neutral and soaring through that. It's really aspirational. I think it, it's, as the boys say, always say, like we, we were ahead, ahead of the time because when we first started, we hadn't got the money mm. to waste a box on every delivery. So everything is reused and reused. And even now down the workshop, I'm sure they think Stephen and I are absolutely pain in the backside, <laughs> like don't waste this. Use it. No, 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 no. That box, box has got twenty. Oh, <laughs> that box has got twenty more deliveries in it, and 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 things like that. But it is. It, our grandson is four. You have a responsibility. I agree. You have a total responsibility, and it may not be much, but if everybody did a small, it's a bit that you can do. Yeah. And if you do what you can do, and everybody does what they can do, then it makes, starts to make a big difference. And that's how we started off and it's grown and grown. And hopefully all the time, especially we look into innovation of how the machinery that we use is more efficient. Mm. I love your, um, the, the water curtain that keeps all of the um, sort of sprays and toxins in. I, I don't know what that's called, but it's really yeah. innovative. Is it in, in the powder coater? You, that's yeah, right. so it's yeah. using water to pull the extra powder out of the atmosphere. And it's such a simple idea, but it works. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's, um, yeah, it's very, very clever to watch it. But yesterday when I was chatting with somebody, it's down to the point of during the winter, um, we have the oven going, obviously, because we're, we're powder coating and making the beds. Um, we'll cook our jacket potatoes <laughs> for lunch <laughs> in the oven. I love so, that. So, as well as doing, doing this, so as well as cooking beds. Repurposing the energy. Yeah, so, 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 as well as cooking beds, we'll have like 10 jacket potatoes in the oven as well. I mean, they do say to me, like, could we do a pizza? I was, was going to say, how are you with a roast chicken? Because I might pop up. Oh, I don't know, actually. I don't know. I've never tried meat in it. Like, so, we cook the potatoes in the oven. I love that. It's just like, yeah. Super. Um, I'm trying to now think of what process we have where we can cook food oh, while we're actually it's not, making lighting. But it's just like, well, the oven's on, so it's basically, yeah. Really? So it's just like, if somebody asks you, how long does it take to cook a jacket potato? You now know the answer. I, I say, well, <laughs> three cycles of powder coat in a bed. <laughs> <laughs> one, one large jacket potato. And it's just, um, but it's just, that it's just thinking, isn't it? It's just the yeah. way you, you approach things. And it's just getting the mindset and starting on that road and anybody and everybody can do it. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And, and I think with, I, I was explaining to Harry um, when we were talking the other day, if you take anybody in Soho Lighting and you slice them down the middle, environmental considerations are kind of in the core of, of our values. And it's not that it's a project, it's a part of how you do things every day. You think about what is the end of each process and the end of each product and how can you reuse. I mean, one of the things that we're still really struggling on is, is how we have, have a 
our drive to have no plastics in our packaging. And much like your bed, sometimes when you have really precious, um, I suppose, materials like our glass, some of the heavy glass like these might be yes. a good example. Um, it's really, we're, we're really struggling and it's our next challenge to find what can we do to replace polystyrene for the really big, heavy pieces. We're about 85% there. Um, with with our products out of plastics, but those big heavy glasses, we can't quite um, find the right material or the right structure yes. that, that will. When you have starch products and um, starch recycled products, that's great until they get damp and then they disintegrate. So it's trying to find something, and that's our next challenge. We'd love to be where you are in complete um, carbon neutrality, and actually, you're going to be soaring past it, aren't you? Into positive, hopefully, yeah, yeah, into, yeah. It, 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 at some point this year. Um, but but for us, we're sort of um, trying to to find that next innovation in terms of packaging and innovation in terms of recycled materials, which we're ne we're nearly there. <laughs> but you also. Well, well Harry blew my mind <laughs> with your lampshade. Oh, thank you. He just thank absolutely, you. and your fishing wire lampshades. Oh, I know. Well, I mean, we're very passionate about sustainability and looking for new, just like you were talking about innovation, looking for new materials. And um, we also feel a responsibility. We have five children. We'd like them to experience the world in the way that we have and for theirs to do the same. And um, although we design, um, and the company was born in London, we were renovating innovating in Soho and that's where we um, thought we can really make switches, sockets, lighting our, ourselves. Um, we actually have the creative part of the business down in Cornwall. Um, so down in the southwest where there's a whole medley of artisans and uh, going back to the traditional handcraft um, sort of uh, trades and skills that, that are dying out. So that's where we base the um, creative part and, and another part of the company down there. And there's this really innovative um, gentleman uh, called Ian who has a company called Fishy Filaments. And so we work with him. He's based in Newland Harbour in Cornwall. And we um, pay for the fish to give us a discarded fishing net because it actually costs quite a lot of money to um, ethically discard of, of, of fishing nets and so they were getting dumped in the sea which of course has huge impact for wildlife and, and sea, sea life and, and uh, we all know the story and the implications of it and so we by paying for the fishing nets not only are they not discarding the fishing nets they're actively collecting other fishing uh, other people's discarded nets from the sea and bringing them and then we're turning them into 3D printed fiber and then I suppose embracing what is it the fourth industrial revolution that we're embarking on and we then 3D print them um, into shades and also recycled plastics um, in, into shades as well and we had a super opportunity um, with Selfridges with their Let's Change campaign and we launched it in April last year um, as, a, as a part of that and what's so wonderful I mean you, you had them yesterday with, um, with a with a photo shoot I think on either side of the bed the green yes. Ionians yes. and when they're lit they look mm. like glass or linen or ceramic you would never know that they're actually recycled plastic no. and so that we're, that's one of our plans for this year is to look for more types of materials that we can use from a, a sustainable source or a recycled source and then along with trying to find some packaging for our for our lights that's um our mission i suppose we, we're aspiring to be like you guys we'd love to get to carbon neutrality and um to to drive that kind of venture but yeah that's that's our our story i suppose in terms of sustainability and where we're going but it's it's, it's to me it's it is a story it is a story but it's a journey oh yeah, yes it is because we're at it, the beginning <laughs> it, it, yeah because it never ever stops because all the time isn't it things that were available weren't available 20 years ago like 3d printing yeah. then, are now becoming available that's it and it's all the time using innovation within industry to make yourselves more sustainable more carbon neutral and to clean that that act up yeah I and agree. it's like us is to get customers to ask the question Yes, yes. Because so where did this come from? Where was it made? How, and because when the, I do believe when the customer starts asking the question, then people will 
change. Yes. Manufacturers yes. Will, will change their practices. Um, and then I think the one other question I was going to ask you, because I'm dying to know, because this is your 20th anniversary of the company and um, National Women's Day, International Women's Day is coming up. And I'd just love to know how it was for you when you first started the company and women in business has changed so much. And even now we're, oh, I think we're about 35% in businesses uh, in terms of women's representation at senior leadership roles, but with entrepreneurial businesses, so ownership, still down at 17%. Yeah. So it's changing, but, but my gosh, 20 years ago when you started the company, it must have been really different. I think it, has, it is changing. And I think um, it's lovely young people's attitude. I think that, that you are young. I am. I, I <laughs> myself is young, but I do find the attitude of um, the younger generation is far more positive. Uh, yeah, far, I far, so. far more positive. And I, what I notice is, with, with, it doesn't matter whether you're male, or female. If you can do the job, you do the job. Oh, absolutely. And, I that, agree. and that's it. And that and that's been my philosophy all the way all the way through. Um, it has changed. Um, yeah, I mean, I've had guys come in and just call me Treacle and where's the boss? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, darling. <laughs> Is your boss here? <laughs> like, oh, oh, just go and have a look. Oh, here I am. Oh, oh, oh here I am. So I say, oh, you again. How are you? Um, yeah, but no, it is changing and it has to change. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, and but uh, but I do think it's like a game. It's the questions, ask the questions, find the answers. And through that, attitudes do change. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, for, for, for me personally, Women's Day is all about equality, as it should be. Right. And we definitely look at people with regards to talent and capability, nothing else in, in, in our business. And w what's transpired is we'll have um, individuals doing roles that perhaps you wouldn't expect or haven't historically been sort of gender prescribed in, in the past. So we've had, um, you know, ladies uh, working in elect as electricians, as welders, as carpenters. Um, we've had female um, driving the whole of the operations of the business with regards to the warehouse, driving the forklift trucks. And equally with men, we've had men in roles that perhaps have been considered um, stereotypically not for them in the past. And, and I think it's really important that people are given opportunities based on what they are passionate about, what they have right. the capability for, um, or, or wish to drive towards. And it, it makes for a really exciting and engaging environment, I think. I think it does. And, and that's it. It's just everybody has something they can bring to the table. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And that doesn't matter, male, female, colour, race, anything is just what that individual can bring and, and is valued for. And that is so important. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I have one more question. Do you have any fits? <laughs> Harry? <laughs> this is why you have children, right? This is perfect. <laughs> this is why. <laughs> to work in your business That's and provide the refreshment. Thank you. Oh, thank Good you, Harry. Harry. Oh no! Thank this, you. I try not to spill it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, congratulations on your 20th and anniversary! Congratulations to you. Beautiful. Thank you. Fabulous. Fabulous. Company. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.